Joining me right now is former House Speaker and Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. Newt, you represented Georgia in the House. Uh, how do you see things? Do you see Republicans keeping the Senate seat? Huh. Look, I actually think Kamala Harris, by her candor, uh, further helped the Republican cause uh, because she echoed what Chuck Schumer had said. First, we take Georgia, then we change America. So I think what we're going to find is that uh, there's not a majority in Georgia for radically changing America. And certainly in both John Ossoff and in Raphael Warnock, they've nominated extraordinarily radical candidates. Warnock may be the most radical candidate ever nominated by a major party for the Senate. And I think they're almost certainly going to lose. It all depends on turnout. If every conservative and every moderate who does not want to see radical change turns out to vote, then the two Republicans will be reelected. And uh, that will have a huge impact historically uh, on what happens. Because if uh, the Republicans have a majority in the Senate and almost a majority in the House, uh, that's going to moderate Biden dramatically. And frankly, if Schumer got to be a majority in the Senate, uh, that would embolden Biden. So I think this is the most important runoff in American history. It, it, it is. And do you think people understand that? I mean, to understand the stakes, because they've <laughs> been very clear in terms of some of the things they want to do. They want to stack the <laughs> Supreme Court. Some people are talking about putting in, you know, multiple liberal justices, uh, at least three or four. Some people said many more. Uh, change uh, change uh, states, make uh, two new states uh, from Puerto Rico and, and Washington, D.C., and not to mention the things that uh, Joe Biden has already told us he wants to do, higher taxes, 4.3 taxes, $4.3 trillion in tax increases, that new Green Deal, $100 trillion uh, policy. Newt? Well, I was going to say, you know, when, when uh, Raphael Warner, in one of his sermons, said, if you're for cutting taxes, you're for killing babies, and he compared the people who voted for the tax cut in 2017 uh, to King Herod, uh, killing all the baby boys when Jesus, when Jesus was born. Now, I think the number of Georgians who believe that voting for cutting taxes is the equivalent of killing babies, and by the way, Warnick himself is very pro-abortion, so it's kind of an ironic position he took. Uh, but I think very few people uh, would equate tax cuts. And frankly, I thought the mayor, you, you were talking earlier to, this morning about New York's problems. I thought de Blasio was a huge help to the Georgia Center race when he announced in his press conference last week that he was waiting on the budget to see who won in Georgia, implying that if the Democrats win in Georgia, he expects to get money out of Georgians to pay for New York's bills. But if the Republicans win in Georgia, he's probably going to have to solve it without money from the federal government. I thought that was a pretty good signal to Georgians from the mayor of New York that uh, their pocketbook is right on the line in this election. Do, do you think people understand what's happening in terms of the push and pull within the Democrat Party? Because you're hearing uh, the extremists like an Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wanting to make these changes and people like Chuck Schumer going along with it. New York Congresswoman AOC spoke out in a podcast interview last week saying that it's time for House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer to step aside and be replaced, Newt. So she's being very clear. She says the current Democratic leadership has not groomed any young lawmakers to take on the roles and that the Democrat House leaders are all over 80 years old. Pelosi has said okay, that if reelected, the... this upcoming term will be her last as the House Speaker, Newt. And AOC, one more thing, AOC said that she's not ready to be Speaker yet. She said yet. Well, look, I, I think AOC is, gets a lot more publicity than her strength in the House warrants. As you know, uh, the Democrats on the steering committee voted 46 to 13 against her. 46 to 13, almost four to one against her, uh, getting on the Energy and Commerce Committee. And I thought that was a really clear signal that there are a lot of Democrats who are fed up with AOC. Uh, she has a big mouth, but she doesn't have a big following in the Congress. She just proved that. So I think Pelosi's mm -hmm. problem is different. Pelosi's presiding over a decaying majority. Uh, Kevin McCarthy's campaign, his commitment to America, uh, the recruiting they did, they, they had a dramatically better election than any of the national experts thought they would. Instead of losing 15 seats, which is what Pelosi thought, she thought she'd pick up 15 seats from the Republicans. 
Instead, she lost something yeah. like a dozen seats. That's a swing of 27 seats in expectation. So she's down to a point now where she doesn't have many votes that she can afford to lose and still be speaker. And uh, I don't think AOC has the courage to do it. But if she wanted to, she and her group could actually stop Pelosi in her tracks by refusing to vote for her. Uh, Pelosi's got to get 218 to be speaker. And that's a very, very narrow number, given how many losses they've had. What's your take on the Hunter Biden investigation, Nude? AG Bill Barr yesterday gives a press conference as he sees no reason to appoint a special counsel to take over the federal investigation uh, into Hunter Biden and his tax affairs. He also said the same thing about an investigation into voter fraud allegations. Barr will step down. His final day is tomorrow. Well, your reaction? Well, I've always opposed special counsels. I think that they're a terrible institution. Uh, ultimately, the special counsel thinks they've got to go get somebody to justify what they're doing. I do think that uh, the regular process, having a U.S. attorney who is responsible for tracking down all of Hunter Biden's activities is legitimate. Uh, whether or not the uh, Biden administration would try to cover it up, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, things are gradually dribbling out. It's pretty clear that, in fact, they did have business ties in China, uh, as well as in Ukraine and in Russia and in Romania. Uh, and I think at some point this will all come out. And again, if the Republicans retain the Senate, I suspect you'll get a congressional investigation uh, directly into this. And I think that uh, the country needs to know. I mean, Chinese penetration of our system is very, very real. We have the same crisis in the House, where, where Congressman Swalwell had an ongoing relationship for years with a Chinese communist spy. And yet, despite that, Nancy Pelosi put him on the Intelligence Committee. I mean, that's another area where, frankly, I think people have got to dig in. He ought to be kicked off the Intelligence Committee. But people should also ask, you know, what was his hold on Pelosi that even after the FBI had briefed them that he had a relationship with the Chinese communist spy, she still put him on the committee? Uh, it makes no sense yeah. to me. I, I used to have her role. And so I've, I've appointed people at the Intelligence Committee, and I can't imagine why you would appoint Swalwell with his Chinese communist ties. Yeah, what, what did he share with his friend, the Chinese spy? We also have emails of uh, Hunter Biden wanting keys to an office, wanting keys made to an office in Washington that he wants to share with Joe Biden, Jill Biden, and the chairman of CEFC, uh, listen to this. This is what Peter Schweitzer discussed on Sunday Morning Futures with me this Sunday. Watch. The email is saying, look, I need a set of keys for Joe Biden, Jill Biden, Jim Biden, my uncle, and the chairman of CEFC, Gong Wen Dong. So all of these people are sharing an <laughs> office together in Washington? I mean, how close can you get with the chairman of a company tied to the CCP? Yeah, it's exactly right, Marie. And that, that is a, a great example, symbolic uh, example of how uh, the Bidens basically have blurred their political activities uh, and their commercial activities and how close and chummy they are. Some of the directors of that company have direct ties to President Xi. So this is not some random Chinese company uh, on the fringes of Chinese political life. It's at the center of it. Uh, and this is the same entity upon which Joe Biden, you know, the so-called big guy, was going to get 10 percent. Look, I, I think Senator Ron Johnson has to continue with his investigation. He's already found a number of things. Uh, I trust that the Republican Senate uh, will continue to dig into this. And frankly, I think in the House, uh, Pelosi has a huge amount to answer for in terms of Swalwell. And I suspect there'll be a vote uh, led by uh, Congressman McCarthy to kick him off the committee. So uh, all of these things that are keep developing, the Chinese are very aggressively competing with us. They're desperately trying to penetrate our society. Biden himself, had a, uh, an operation at the University of Pennsylvania, which was accepting millions of dollars from China. It's all secret. Nobody will tell us where the money came from, how the money was spent. Uh, I think all of us should be deeply concerned about the effort by the Chinese communists to penetrate the United States. Yeah, absolutely. Newt, great to get your insights as always. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. We'll see you soon. Newt Gingrich.